So what happens to batteries after they're no longer working? They oxidate. They oxidate, they what? The juice runs out. Juice runs out? What do you do with them? You take them to the... It's 544 p.m. I'm actually gonna get ready to head home, but the activity that I did with my students that was sponsored by Home Depot and Discovery Education was a hit with my students. And so I talked about it in another video. Um, so I'm excited to do it with my B-Day classes on Thursday. I think doing the electro cam on Friday with them so that w they were able to see um, how Voltaic Cell looked and how it worked and um, how actually how it was set up helped them when they did this particular activity because many of the students, when they saw the copper, they immediately went to or select the copper as one of their choices, whether it was like a small nail or whether it was a copper coupling. And so they need to use that. And then once I said that the galvanized nail was a uh, was coated in zinc, they were like, went straight for it and um, several pairs got their light, their LED to light up. So I was pretty excited about that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about the fact that I was able to be contacted and given the opportunity by Home Depot and Discovery Education in order to do it with all my students because um, the original activity, the way they have it written is for group of four. But if you follow me um, since the beginning of the school year, I like to do a lot of my labs in pairs or sometimes trios. So I wanted all my students to be able to do it as we would normally do labs. And Home Depot was gracious enough to give me a gift card in the amount that I had requested in order to be able to purchase the materials. So I'm going to grab my stuff and I'm going to head home. It's Tuesday, 10.22 a.m. I have about eight minutes before my advisory class begins. So my B-Day classes are doing the lesson that my A-Day classes did. On Friday, it's the introduction to Electrochem. So it's a blended learning experience. And I actually am going to talk a little bit later this week that I am changing or I'm piloting um, what I want to do next year in terms of standards-based grading and how I'm going to grade the students. And during the fourth and fifth six weeks, what I did on their tests is the students did really well. I went back into the grade book in any category for a particular topic. Um, I changed that grade. So for example, when we did like percent composition, if they got 100 on that portion of the test, I went in and I changed their quiz grade that was over percent composition, um, their homework or anything that was titled percent composition. So because at that point they demonstrated mastery, I'm doing the same thing this six weeks. However, I've gone to a number scale from one to four, it's five scale, one, two, three, 3.5 3 and four. And then each number has a, um, it's converted to a percentage. And then also I created this kind of pathway in Canvas so that way students can learn at their own pace. And I shared it with them. So I told students like, hey, if you want a hundred, like if you want a four, like you're demonstrating that you understand this and you can go above and beyond basically what I'm asking. All students should be aiming for a three because that's just like proficient. Like you're able to be able to do this and you understand for the most part um, the material. So um, I'm excited about that because I've already started to build um, the first six weeks for next school year. I just haven't shot the videos, but I've outlined kind of the models in Canvas. And so during the summer, I'm gonna come up here and shoot videos and basically create a curriculum, but then also make sure that I have experiences because the issue that I ran into earlier, I haven't run into now, but when I tried to do it a little bit earlier this school year, my mistake was that I would hold up the entire class. So if a student finished, then they just kind of, um, were like, I asked them to help other students and I don't want them to do that. I want them to be able, like if they're accelerating, hey, go back and do, there's these optional labs that you can do choose. Whereas I want certain students to do a particular lab that all students would do. But then those that are, you know, finishing quickly, they'll have lab experiences that they can do. Um, so that way, like, that's what they, you know, many of the students have told me that they want to just do more labs. And so I think that would, entice many students who are perhaps maybe falling behind to try to speed up. We'll see. That's kind of what I'm thinking, but hopefully speed up so that way they get the opportunity to do some of the labs that their peers are doing. I am going to get ready for my advisory class and then today um, it's all on my six and seven period, although there is a field trip. My school is actually partner partnering up with IBM and so students are going to go to this thing at UT um, and the partnership with IBM, I believe, starts in 2019, 2020 school year. I could be wrong. I'll double check that, but I'm gonna get ready for my school day. It's Wednesday, 4.57 p.m. I'm actually gonna get ready to go home because it's looking pretty 
nasty outside. If you can see, it's raining earlier and you hear the thunder in the distance. Um, so my students took an assessment and I'll show you, hold on as I try to figure this out because <laughs> one of the names is on there. But it was over voltaic cells and um, this one was very kind of thorough, but there are a couple other ones that I thought looked really well done. Um, so as I said, I think yesterday that I am doing piloting standards-based grading a little bit um, with more fidelity, I guess I should say, compared to what I was trying to do this school year. And it's something that I want to do next school year because I will have the summer to plan and get everything ready. So um, the students were already told that they are going to be based, they're going to get tested over or assessed, I'm not tested, assessed, I guess I could say tested, assessed over particular standards or all the standards for the remainder of the school year for the current unit that we're on. And I've written out criteria for each level, so level one through four, it's one, two, three, three point five, four. So the students can see what they need to know and be able to do. Three is sort of like the proficient where like everybody should be testing gap, but then students who want to go above and beyond and get a higher score um, to really show that they understand and go above what just the normal standard um, that I have to teach requires. So there are some students that obviously want to demonstrate that. And then also for students who want to go out there, you know, want to go a little bit more quicker. So it seems to be working, um, but again, I've only done it. This was like the second second time with my B day, my, my A day classes. My B day, they did, they started it, but my A day did it last Friday. And, um, but I will have my B day again this Friday, so they'll be able to catch up. They're doing the Lemon Power Battery activity that I was sponsored by the Home Depot and Discovery Education, so I'm excited about that. Tomorrow I actually need to go buy lemons. Um, I'm either gonna do that on my way home or I'll do that first thing in the morning since I have fifth period off. And um, yeah, and that's it. So STAR EOC testing is next week. I don't know how I'm gonna be affected by that because they haven't sent out the schedule, so I don't know if I will be administering any of the tests, whether it's biology, US history, or algebra one and then any other retests, and then AP testing is also beginning. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm gonna grab my stuff, I'm gonna go home. I wanted to talk a little bit more and show you some of the, how I set everything up on Canvas, but it's starting to rain and I wanna get out to my car before it gets really nasty outside. Question one was, list at least five things that you're either currently using or have used in the past that require the use of batteries. Just pop one out. What is it? Nothing? Remote control, remote. Flashlight, phone, phone clock, clock your computer, computer. your what? MP3 player, MP3 player phones, cars, cars. Flashlight. flashlights. Okay, I think we get the point. So, question number two. Question number two is how would our lives be different without batteries? We would have no life. We would have no life? We couldn't what? Everything would be plugged into the wall. Everything would be plugged into the wall. Other energy sources. No, the energy the energy Not portable. What about solar power? Solar power? Okay. Other types of power? No. Down until within a minute, you wrap the wire around material B and then connect the wire to material A on the battery. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, it's easy. Is it the MRI from the car? Yeah. 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 Let me have the shirt for LED. Red for Ed. It is 5.26 p.m. for those of you who understand what I'm talking about. 5.26 p.m. Thursday. I actually need to head out pretty soon because I was invited to um, a spring show several of my students are in. They gave me a personal invitation last week along with the gift. And so I'm going to head over there. But I was prepping some lab stuff because I'm piloting the standards-based grading a module for this last grading period and so students who are progressing through the modules and they demonstrate that they understand whether they're just proficient or they are the mastery level they have an opportunity to, to select from um, I guess a selection of labs that I have but I'm not in a rush because 
they won't start that until like the middle of next week and the week after next. My BA students, they did the activity limit power batteries that I was sponsored by through the partnership between the Home Depot and Discovery Education. So they had a blast and I was actually able to use the bins because that's what I put the lemons in. Um, yesterday, like one of my classes, some of the students were juggling, not yesterday, Monday. Some of the students were juggling the lemons, so I had to tell them to put them down. So today I made sure to place them in the bins and I didn't have an issue with students trying to juggle the lemons. So I'm gonna take care of some stuff real quick before I head over to the theater for the show. It is 4.42 p.m. I show was gonna vlog a little bit more about what I'm doing this greeting period, but just got sidetracked today. And then also I spent the last 15 minutes cleaning up vanilla ice cream because we had ice cream delivered to our classrooms, classrooms today, six period. And I forgot that I had leftovers and I put it on the cart behind my innovation station where my interactive notebook is at. So yeah, when school was over, I saw that my interactive notebook was covered in ice cream and it seeped through the cart. So I spent the last 15 minutes cleaning up that. Uh, I will talk about what I'm doing next week. My BA students just did what my AD students did on Wednesday. We'll take cell assessment. I was pretty happy with some of the things that I got from the students. So I'm gonna go home and enjoy the rest of my evening and weekend. Well, that's it. If there was anything about this video that you liked, then make sure to hit that like button, comment down below, and or share the video. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe so that way you can bond with James. And if you're interested in checking out some of my other vlogs, you can do so by clicking on any of the links right here. As always, thanks for watching.